Hello, my math friends. This is Mrs. Schlecht. And in this video, um, we're going to talk about prime and composite numbers. All right, so just so you know, um, it would still be great to have your math notebook out and a pencil and that amazing math attitude. Um, but this is just kind of like a little math, little extra bit for you. So it's actually not inside your Envision book. You might be thinking, well, then, Mrs. Schlecht, why are you wasting my time with this? And it's because, my friends, this idea about prime and composite numbers, uh, pretty big, and we'll actually be using it to make your life easier from now until, like, forever. So um, I just want to take, like, I don't know, a couple minutes, and let's just go over prime versus composite. All right, so I got these two words, prime, composite. So um, these two words, the main thing that we're really talking about is how can I create numbers, right? How can I um, build numbers or how can I break them apart, right? And it comes down to prime versus composite. So here are a couple different ways that Mrs. Schlecht remembers like which one's worth which. So I'm a crime junkie, totally love true crime. And one way that I remember what prime means is the term prime suspect. So if you're like a crime junkie like me, right? When you get a prime suspect, that's the one person they think did the crime, right? Prime means that there's only one way I can really multiply to get whatever that prime number is, right? And the only one way I can multiply in order to get a prime number is if I multiply that prime number and the number one. And that means it, that that's it, right? So prime, I always think that just means like one way, okay? So for example, 11, 11 is a prime number. Can you think of all the different ways multiplying I can get 11. So my friends, we know that 11 is prime, right? The only way that I am able to multiply and able to get 11 as my product or the answer to that multiplication problem is when I take 11 times one and that equals 11. And that's it, right? That is because 11 is prime, my friends, right? That prime suspect, that's that one person. Prime means that that number only has one way that you can multiply it, right? To get 11 as your product. All right, so now let's talk about composite, okay? So it's kinda, if you think about it, the opposite of prime, right? If prime means there's only one way I can multiply to get it, composite is more than one way. And here's how I like to think about it. Composite reminds me of compost. And if you ever composted something, you know that you take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and a little bit of that, 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 right? And then you put it in one place and it becomes um, a composite or a collection of all of those individual different pieces, right? So that's kind of what I like to think about composite, my friends, is that composite is you're taking a little bit of this, taking a little bit of this, 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 and this. So you can have more than one way in order to get a product for a composite number. So here's what I mean by that. All right, so 12 is a composite number, my friends. And I know that because there is at least three different ways I can use multiplication in order to get 12 as my product, right? I can do two times six, that equals 12. I could also do six times two equals 12, right? I could do three times four equals 12 or four times three equals 12, or one times 12 equals 12, or 12 times one equals 12, right? So again, my friends, composite, that means that there's lots of different ways you can multiply in order to get that composite number as your product, right? Composite, composed, it's made up of lots of different pieces versus prime, which is our prime suspect, just one. There's only one way to use multiplication in order to get that. All right, my friends, so another term that you might hear when we're talking about prime and composite numbers is prime factorization, okay? So you might have heard about this before, maybe not, but factor trees, that's what this is talking about, okay? And that's basically when we take that big old composite number that's made up of lots of different tiny factors and we're breaking it down to get it to like its prime factors, okay? So I also like to think of it as like this, again, kind of thinking from like a crime buff kind of sort of mindset. I think of prime factorization as like getting the DNA sequence to that composite number, right? So like, let's say that we're looking at a big old composite number, like, I don't know, 100, right? 
And by using prime factorization, my friends, we're like sequencing its DNA, right? So that we can figure out what are the basic building blocks of 100, okay? So prime factorization, we're taking that big composite number, which has lots and lots and lots of different factors, and we're like breaking it down to like the simplest building blocks for that number, okay? All right, my friends, so we're going to try some prime factorization, aka a factor tree. Um, and I want to start with the number 27. Now, that's a composite number, right? It's made of lots of different factors inside. And there is totally, totally a reason I chose 27. Would you like to know why I chose 27? So I chose 27, my friends, because it's an odd number, right? I look at the ones place, and that's a 7, and I know that seven's an odd number. Therefore, 27 is an odd number, right? But... This is the big reason I chose 27 for this upcoming factor tree, my friends. Sometimes some people get confused and they think that every single even number automatically composite and every single odd number automatically prime. And that's not a hard and fast rule, my friends, right? For example, the number two, okay, number two, um, it's an even number, right? It's a prime number. How many ways can you use multiplication in order to get two? Well, just once, right? Two times one, and that's it, right? So two, even though it is a even number, it's actually prime. In fact, it's the only even prime number, right? But then let's take a peek at 27. It's an odd number, right? Just like 11 was an odd number. However, it's actually composite because there's more than one way for me to use multiplication in order to get 27 as my product, all right? And we'll get to that here in a second. But again, I just want to make sure that we understand that just because a number is even does not mean 100% that it's going to be a composite number. And the flip side of that, just because a number is odd does not mean that it's 100% of the time going to be a prime number. Because remember, it's all about factors, my friends, not about even or odd factors. All right, so 27, that's the composite number that we're going to start at, correct? And now think to yourself, well, how can I use multiplication in order to get 27? Well, I know one I can do is three times nine. So we know that three times nine equals 27. So that proves real quick, my friends, that 27 is in fact a composite number. But when we're going for the prime factorization, remember I'm trying to break it down into that DNA sequence, right? Into like the teeniest, tiniest prime building blocks that I can use in order to get 27. So I know that three, that's a prime number. I can't break three down anymore. So I'm going to circle it. And that's my way of telling my Mrs. Schlecht brain, hey, you're done with that three. That three is prime. Leave it alone. That's that smallest, smallest, smallest piece right there. But what about nine? Is nine a prime number? Think of all the ways that you can use multiplication in order to get nine. Yes, you can do one times nine, but is there any other way you can get nine? you're like a rock star. Of course, you know that you can do three times three and that would also get you nine. So again, nine was a composite number, my friends. It was made up of more than just two factors, right? And so I was able to split it up until two prime numbers. And just like we said over here, three is a prime number. So this is prime and this is prime. That means I cannot break it down any further. So I'm going to circle those threes to show you that I know that this is prime and that's kind of my end point. All right, so now let's check this out, my friends. We started with that big old composite number 27 and then we used prime factorization to be able to get three, three, three. What this means, my friends, is that if I do three times three, that's nine times three is 27. So I took that big composite number and I was able to break it down to the tiniest of building blocks. And I now have three times three times three, which I could write a couple different ways. Because remember when we were talking about exponents, this is when exponents can come to life, my friends, right? So after our prime factorization, we learned that 27 is the same as saying three times three times three, but thanks to exponents, we know that when we have that repeated multiplication using that same number, I can just rewrite it as a base with an exponent. 
So since three is that number that I'm repeating, three becomes my base. And it just so happens that since I just have three threes, that becomes my exponent as well. So we could say that 27 is equal to three times three times three or three cubed. All right, my friends. So that first example, we saw that 27, which although was odd, was actually a composite number, correct? And we were able to break it down into its DNA sequence using prime factorization. And we saw that inside that big composite number of 27, there's actually three little threes that are being multiplied together. So precious. But let's take a peek at this. So now I have 23, all right? Back to an odd number. But in this case, my friends, Think of all the different ways you can use multiplication to get 23. So there's only one way you can use multiplication in order to get 23, and that's if you take one times 23. And so that, my friends, is a prime number, correct? Because I have 23, but there's no way I can't keep breaking it down, right? So actually, my friends, the prime factorization for 23 is, in fact, one times 23. That's it. This is the DNA sequence. This is the prime factorization of 23 because it's a prime number, my friends. So we could write the prime factorization of 23 like this. So our prime factorization of 23 is just 23 times 1 because 1, it's prime. 23, it's prime. So again, when I have prime numbers, I can't break it down anymore, right? 23, that's as tiny as 23 can go using multiplication, right? The That's the factors of 23 is 1 and 23. All right, my friends. So just to kind of sum up, right? Prime factorization, that's that factor tree where we're taking that big old composite number and we're trying to break it into the tiniest building blocks of that number, right? The prime factors. Think of that DNA sequence, right? Getting it down to the smallest building blocks that make up that composite number, right? Composite numbers are those numbers that can be broken down. So we saw 27, 12. Those are all numbers that there's so many different ways I can use multiplication in order to get those products, right? But prime, like our prime suspect, there's only one way that I can use multiplication to get that answer as a product. So like 11, right? That was prime because the only way I was able to get that was one times 11. Three, that was prime because the only way I can get three using multiplication is one times three, right? Uh, 23, that was also prime because the only way I can get 23 is if I multiply one times 23. Hey right, friends, so that's just a quick run through over prime versus composite. If you have any other questions, let me know.